Uh, let's let's finally go ahead and hit that uh, internal web server guy, which is supposed to, of course, be our Ubuntu machine, and we'll see how yet again another way that we'll have to go through and uh, uh, configure I, our our IP address. So let's let's make this one go full screen and kind of take a look at this. And just like before, we saw the IP space A command did work. This was a good command for us. However, this command was something that we saw, hey, it now says ENS18. This is not an ETH0 interface like our other machine. So we're, we're just gonna have to, we're just gonna have to be careful with that. We're gonna have to realize we can't type ETH0 on this. We're gonna have to use ENS18. Uh, the other thing to realize is that this does not have either of those files of what we just had before, slash etc, slash network, slash interfaces. It's like, well, Ubuntu used to come with that. So if you're on an older version of Ubuntu, it might still have that. But on the newer versions of Ubuntu, it doesn't. So that's not something that we have, and they're not going to have the sysconfig one either, the sysconfig, network dash scripts, those IFCFG files. Yeah, that's not something Ubuntu is going to have. So new versions of Ubuntu are shipping with this thing called NetPlan. All right, so if we do a quick little LS, we'll, we'll be able to see that there is a, a, a folder called slash etc slash NetPlan. And this is really what they want you to use inside, uh, inside your NetPlan folder, is these different configuration files. And so inside the NetPlan folder right now, usually on a blank Ubuntu computer, you have usually one file that is a .yaml, .yaml, okay? So you'll have these files that are in here, and these are the files that you're looking for. And the reason why I say files is because you could have more than one. On most fresh installs, it's only going to come with one. It comes with a 01-network-manager-all.yaml, right? And so this, this is something that other computers, more sophisticated servers or servers that have had a, uh, let's say, a more advanced networking configuration, there might be more than one file in here that actually has this, that doesn't have necessarily just one. But at least for now, we can see there's only one, right? We don't have an IP address. Nothing's been applied uh, in this particular file. So let's take a look at this file. And like always, this is going to require sudo and actually to go to modify anything. So let's do a sudo. And maybe this time to mix things up, I'll do nano, right? We just used VI in, in, the, in the previous one for modifying sense. So let's also get practice with nano, say sudo nano slash etc slash net plan slash zero dash one blah, blah, blah. I'm just hitting tab, right? I'm just going to hit tab inside net plan and that'll type the whole thing out. Let's go ahead and confirm our password and let's see what's in this file. Again, there should, there should be some things that exist already inside this file. It says network, it says version 2, we've already got a renderer in here. All right, and so realize the majority of this file is blank and it's structured differently. Right? It's structured differently than the previous two files. And so learning the structure of this file is really important. And lots of websites can help you with this. There's a lot of websites that can help you show you these are potential ways you can structure the file. And so I'm going to show one way to do this. And what I'm emphasizing is there's actually other ways that we could we could uh, uh, configure, put the information in this file and it technically would still work. But this is this is one way that I think is simple, straightforward, kind of bare minimum and gets us across the finish line for what it is that we're looking to do here. Um, now, one thing we want to pay attention to, certainly in this file, definitely is the spacing. Okay, we got to be real careful with the spacing. The spacing in this file is usually something we need to be really consistent with. And so right now you can see there's some information here configured for our first network where everything has been spaced with two space bars. So I'm going to continue that. So we're going to need to add on some other piece of information here underneath the renderer. And I want to make sure that I have the spacing to kind of line it up and then continue to tab my way in a little bit using this double space uh, style uh, uh, technique. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Now, the next thing we're going to want to add here is we are going to declare our ethernets. Let's go ahead and spell that correctly. Ethernets. Ethernet. So here's where we can now start adding in what are the different interfaces that you want to configure. Now, right now, we only have one interface. But as we saw, if this was a server that had multiple interfaces, well, then we'd be able to start listing them underneath this. All right. So we're not actually going to put the value to the right here of the colon. We're actually going to go to the next line and then kind of tab in a little bit more using a double space again. All right, so I'm declaring uh, values underneath my Ethernets category. And what I want to do is declare, well, what's the name of my interface? So my name of the, my first interface is ENS18. Now, it is my only interface that I have. But like I said, if you had others, you could list other interfaces at the appropriate tab level. So I'm going to say ENS18, put a colon. And again, now I get to start declaring details about this particular interface. So you kind of have this tabbed in structure that becomes really important to manage as you add more and more details to this particular file, especially if you have multiple interfaces. You want to you be real careful with 
with this file. Okay, so we're going to jump onto the next line. And again, I'll hit double, uh, double space. I'll do it again to line up with ENS18. Now I'm declaring some details about ENS18, so I'm going to space in two more times as well. And the next thing that I want to make sure I'm trying to, uh, the, the, the real thing I'm trying to declare here, of course, is going to be an IP address. So let's go ahead and add in the variable for that, which is addresses, addresses, and then a colon. So yes, technically, and we'll get to this in the future, you could have multiple IP addresses assigned to the same interface at the same time. That is possible. Okay, a little bit more of an advanced configuration as to why you might want to do that. But yeah, that, that's why the variable is addresses plural, because yeah, technically, we could have more than one. All right, so let's go ahead and go on to the next line here and say what are the addresses that I'd like to declare to start for this particular line. I'm hitting my double spaces to get underneath the word addresses. And so again, we got to space it in again to say what's the first address that I want to add to my ENS18 interface, which is an Ethernet adapter. It's like, okay, so the way you do this is you put a dash, a space, and then what's the IP address. And according to my picture, I wanted to add this to be 192.168.myNumber118.2, right? Look, if, you, if, you, if you forget, just go back and check the picture again, right? 192.168.myNumber, which was 118, and then this one is dot .2. So we can hopefully appreciate now, this is connected to the 192.168.118, and it's going to be device number one. This one's connected to the 192.168.118, and it's going to be device number two. And of course, we had our internal Kali machine where you could practice this more to say, well, we've got 192.168.118, and that one's going to be device number 100. Okay, and that's what the slash 24 kind of tells us about every single one of these. All right, so let's go back over to our Ubuntu machine and kind of fix, finish this off. Now, with your other configurations, you had to actually add in the netmask line where you would say 255.255.255.0. With your net plan file, you can keep the slash notation. So we can add in the address, and then we can simply say slash 24. So that's the same as saying 255, 255, 255, right? And again, take some more networking classes if, if you, you, you still haven't heard that yet, and, you, and you're still learning some stuff. So it's, it's, it, it ends up being equivalent to that. All right. So those are the minimum changes we would need to make to get an IP address and a net mask to bring our device online. All right. And so let's start here. Let's at least start by bringing an IP address online for this machine. So I'll hit my control X, Y, enter, control X, Y, enter. Okay. Is, do I now have an IP address? It's like, well, okay, no, I haven't restarted the service yet. Right. You, you got to remember, make changes to your configuration files, then go and restart your service. Now for this one, we could do a system CTL as a restart. But this one has a net plan service, but I want us to understand that many services have built-in commands in order to apply their changes or to restart themselves. So whenever you can, if you can learn about an internal service command that will restart the thing, you know, that's always good to use. Sometimes you can just use the built-in system CTL, right? That's kind of having the operating system going and restarting the service. But some services themselves have, have some utilities or some commands that will help you out. So you can just run their command. So we'll try that for net plan. All right. So in other words, I'm not going to do a pseudo system CTL. We, we could do it that way, but NetPlan actually has something built in that allows us to do it. And that's a pseudo NetPlan and then apply. So if you make changes to your NetPlan file, you can always do a pseudo NetPlan apply, and that should go through and make the changes and apply the changes. Okay. Again, provided you haven't made any typos, providing your spacing is good, you didn't screw up a colon versus a semicolon. You know, these files are very, very specific. One character wrong, you know, and it can break the whole configuration and the thing will just give you an error. All right. Uh, let's see. Did it actually work? If we do an IPA, it's like, hey, there we are. We're now at 192.168.118.2, right, at a slash 24. And now we've been able to bring our networking online for all of these. So we've been learning about our networking service, you know, and we're starting to follow the topology. Um, and this has been uh, something that's really good. Uh